Good morning. Steve here in Southern Illinois again. In the companion piece, the Sabbath devotional, Playing the Fool, I asked a question at the end. Are you ready to play the fool for Jesus? When Vivian and I were talking about that ahead of time, she said, Steve, I don't have a clue what you're asking, and neither will they. So in today's text talk, we're going to explore the Bible behind the question, and then you can answer it. Playing the fool. First passage I'd like to point you to is 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians is an interesting book. Uh, this letter to the, the church at Corinth from Paul talks about being the fool again and again and again and again. So 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verses, verse 23. First Corinthians chapter one, verse 23. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness. That word stumbling block, the Greek is scandalon, from which we get scandalous. <clears throat> Christ, even in Paul's day, was scandalous. It wasn't popular to preach Christianity. People didn't so much, well, some people did get angry about it, but more often it made you the laughing stock. To the Greeks, what they were saying was foolishness. Just as many people don't understand the message of Christianity today. Playing the fool for Christ means not being afraid to be thought a fool. <clears throat> Christ foolishness being thought a fool. So there's one aspect of being a fool. If you turn over to chapter 4, verse 10, here's another aspect that Paul talks about. Uh, so I'm going to start with verse 9. For I think that God hath set forth us the apostles last, as it were appointed to death, for we are made a spectacle to the world, and to the angels, and to men. We are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are honorable. We are despised. Another aspect of being playing the fool for Christ um, is being willing to be looked down upon by the very people that you are uplifting. Pastors experience this frequently from their churches. But those of us who serve others know that often that service is taken for granted. And it doesn't have to be religious in character, anyone who is serving other people can be thought a fool. <clears throat> then in chapter 9 of 1 Corinthians, here's another aspect of playing the fool for Christ. And I'm going to read verses 19 through 23. For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I might gain all things. And unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews. To them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. To them that are without the law, as without law, being not without law to God, but under the law to Christ that I might gain them that are without law. To the weak I became as weak, that I might gain the weak. I made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. As I understand what Paul's saying here, as it plays out in my life, it means identifying with others. 
not holding yourself aloof, better than. Okay, One of the big traps when we are trying to serve people is to think of ourselves as better than them in any way. There but for the God, the grace of God, go I. We have to identify with people. And that mean, that is true whether they believe the Bible or not. That is true whether they are Christians or not. We have to find the grounds for identifying with them. It doesn't mean that we abandon who we are, our identity, our purpose, our meaning, our spirituality. But it means that we recognize that they are worthy of respect. That's the only way that Paul found of winning people, treating everyone with the respect. We've been talking about playing the fool, but the Bible also talks about Christians and religious people being fools. And I want to touch bases on that just a bit here. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23 and verse 23. This is part of Jesus' response to the scribes, the educated religious people and the the uh, Pharisees, the leaders of the churches, the pastors, okay. um, <clears throat> after they have set themselves to try to destroy his ministry. And he says some pretty hard things to them. Okay. So I'm going to read verse 23. Chapter 23, verse 23. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye pay tithe on mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. As I understand what Jesus was, was saying in this passage, he had many critiques of the religious people in his, his day, okay? But in this specific passage, what he's saying is, you're very meticulous in your religious observance, but you don't pay attention to the things that can't be covered in religious laws and religious rules. Things like justice, mercy, faithfulness. And you see that in, in the lives of Christians today. While some of us are interested in social justice, just we're, many of us are just as likely to say, oh, that's not important. That, 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 we're not called to take, take issue with that. Okay? To me, social justice and seeking justice is part and parcel of following Jesus. And what Jesus is saying here is if you neglect justice, if you neglect mercy, and you are meticulous in your religious observance, we're being fools. And I've been guilty of that. I confess that. Okay? I have been a fool. I don't want to be a fool anymore. Prioritizing the religious over the spiritual is being a fool. Now, if you flip over to Luke chapter 24, verse This is Jesus speaking to his disciples after he has been resurrected. And verse 24 says, Certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher and found it empty, even as the women had said, but him they say not. 
But then Jesus said to them, O oh, fools, and slow at heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Why did he call them fools? Because they took their religious traditions more, uh, more importantly than they did the words of the Bible. It's very easy to fall into this trap. You see, traditions are just habits. And we learn habits, we develop habits as Christians, as religious people, as spiritual people. And with time, they become comfortable and we start defending them. Now, Christians, as Christians, um, as a Protestant Christian, I take the Bible as the supreme authority in my life. But sometimes my habits blind me to what the Bible is actually saying. And that's what Jesus is talking about here. He's not talking to bad people. He's talking to his own disciples. And he says, you're fools when you let tradition blind you to the words of Scripture. For those of us who lean more towards being spiritual rather than religious, um, habits can blind us to the spiritual principles that we want to represent. But it's easy to slip into the comfortable rather than implementing change and development and growth. Okay, on to Romans chapter 1, verse 22. Romans 1, 22. Here Paul is talking about people in this world who choose to ignore evidence in the physical world of a power beyond the physical. Materialism is what I'm talking about. And Paul, in describing them, okay, so uh, I'm going to start with verse 21. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became, became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Now, I, can, I have to include myself here, okay? Uh, I have mentioned before that I, I spent uh, a, a prolonged period in my life as an agnostic, uh, basically adopting the attitude that you couldn't prove the religious texts, any religious text was handed down from God, and therefore there was always an element of relativism and, and uncertainty. You couldn't know. Paul says, that's being foolish. There's enough evidence in the physical world to lead us to conclude that there is a creator. Now, I want to be careful here, okay? Many of you have concluded that there is not a creator. You have concluded that because you have been taught to look through a certain lens and to weigh certain evidence as being important. In other words, it's a tradition that you have learned. I learned when I studied science. It took me a long time to recognize that that lens, the lens of naturalistic science was just that, an interpretive method. When I put that method aside and said, what 
does the evidence say to me, apart from that interpretation, I concluded that I didn't find believing in purposeless matter as meaningful, which is why my spirituality led me back to a belief in God as creator. And yet there are many Christians who do not believe in the creative creation as it's written in the Bible. Many Christians who have tried to not play the fool in the eyes of science. And so they try to meld Christianity and naturalistic science and a cosmology of evolution and happenstance together. Paul says that's being foolish. Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. O oh, foolish Galatians, who bewitched you that you would not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been clearly set forth and crucified among you? The only, this only I would learn of you. Did you receive the Holy Spirit through the works of the law or by the hearing of the faith? Are you so foolish? Having begun in the Spirit by faith, are you now being perfected by flesh. The Galatians were being exposed to people who were telling them that they had to follow certain religious root rituals in order to be accepted by God. Basically, they were being taught the rule of performance. If you don't do certain things, you're not good. Ever heard that? Ever lived by that? You see, the rule of performance tells us that if we aren't perfect, we're evil. We're not good. Now, our boss may tell us that. He may yell and scream at us when we're not perfect because he wants us to deliver. And that's the point. You see, God's not in this to get your performance. God just wants your heart. Now, these text talks are just kind of blunt and out there. I don't spend a lot of time with illustrations and stories, and that's because I want you to stimulate you to go to the Bible and search for yourself. Okay? When it comes to playing the fool, the text that I've presented to you today lead me to understand that playing the fool for Christ means being willing to be thought foolish by non-believers, to be thought foolish by believers who I am serving, and to be thought foolish because of who I am. I will lower myself to whatever level it takes to reach the people that God has put in my basket because they are worthy of respect and they are his children. I will not hold myself as being better than them. On the other hand, being the fool means prioritizing the religious over the spiritual, tradition over the Bible, materialism over spiritual values and submitting myself to the rule of performance. Be safe, my friends. Be prudent. But above all, look up. <laughs>